Hello there, Nat Edwards and Riley Beveridge with you. We'll be keeping it simple thanks to AHM Health Insurance as we take you through what's happening with player contracts and the much anticipated trade period. So Riley, let's start with player contracts because every year there are a number of players who come out of contract. That's no different in 2020. Are clubs able to re-sign these players because there are some very big names on this list? There are, and in short, the answer is no. Okay. So we know that the financial pitfalls of the COVID-19 pandemic are expansive, they're wide ranging, and basically it's so much uncertainty at the moment that you just can't have a situation where okay. players are re-signing. So the AFL's put a blanket ban over clubs signing players to contract extensions at the moment. Uh, the reasons for that are because there's a number of implications that goes into it. So basically, we don't know if salary cap's going to get reduced. We don't know if list sizes are going to get reduced. If they are, clubs and players, both of them, uh, both parties, want to know whether or not they're going to have enough spaces on the list for these players, how much money is going to be involved to actually re-sign okay. them. So basically that's, that's the reason for the blank ban. Clubs are in the dark at the moment as to when that'll be uh, finalised and resolved and when players will be able to re-sign. But we don't think that's going to be the case until the CBA, the renegotiated CBA, is, is finalised, which could come anywhere between now and the end of the year. It's so. a tricky situation, isn't it? Because you've got someone like Jordan Degoe who yeah. could demand big money from a number of other clubs. So Collingwood would be keen to sign him on. Are the days of a long-term big money deal just gone? Like, does Jordan Degoe yeah. have any hope of getting the money that his uh, teammate Brody Grundy got earlier? I don't think so. Not necessarily. So we heard Darcy Moore, who's another one at Collingwood that's out of contract at the moment. He spoke on radio about a month ago saying that he thought it might not be feasible to get a long-term big money contract. I don't think necessarily they're okay. done. If you're willing to take longer term but on smaller money, yep. uh, maybe that's how you can get a long-term deal in this current climate. Uh, and going forward, maybe the, the, the next CBA, when that's negotiated, maybe there's more money involved at play and then, then players will be able to start triggering contract clauses where they can get longer term deals okay. as part of it. So I don't think so. But as you mentioned there, Collingwood's a great example in the fact that they came into the year with Grundy, Pendlebury, Moore and Dugowie all out of contract they've still got two of those out. So Moore and Dugowie are still out. How can you re-sign them when you don't know how much money is at play? Exactly. Because they've already signed Grundy to a big deal. Will that have to get renegotiated now? Because that money might just not be as significant as what it once was. So they're a good example as to why this blanket ban over players re-signing has been put in place. Yeah, it's a nervous time for Collingwood fans out there. Now, a lot of um, out-of-contract players are actually fringe players. Mm. So how are they supposed to prove they're worthy of a new deal with no state league participation at the moment. Yeah, it's a good question. Those fringe players, and particularly the ones that are out of contract, they're going through so much uncertainty mm. at the moment. It's hard not to feel sympathy and empathy with them. So um, the AFL has announced earlier this week that they will be able to get practice games in. So you mentioned before that uh, a, a player who might be on the fringes of Collingwood's best 22 now, because they're not allowed to play in VFL, they can't get that reserves footy under their belt. But now they can play Great. against other players who aren't in the best 22 at other clubs, so long as it's within their own state. Okay and that it's at an AFL-approved venue. So that's great news for them. They'll be able to prove their worth, try and get their way back into that best 22, and then hopefully try and get their future secured beyond just 2020. So if all things go to plan, we manage to play the next 16 rounds without interruption, which is the hope, so fingers crossed. The grand final will likely fall on October 24, and October, as we know in the past, has usually been when trade period falls. Yep. So what's happening with that? We don't know just yet. Um, you'd think if it follows the, the same sort of rhythm, it'd be two weeks after the grand final, yeah. which would probably be mid to late November, you'd think, or sometime in that mid-November period. Which then pushes the draft back, doesn't it? Exactly, and the draft is probably what they're waiting on as well. If junior footy and if... Um, if state championships at, at junior level go ahead, but later in the year when they're able to and these players are able to fly into state and, and play each other, if that falls later in the year, clubs want to go into the trade period knowing what draft picks they have to work with and knowing exactly which players they could be targeting with those draft picks. So there's no point a club trading for a first round pick if they're not certain what players are going to be in that first round bracket. So the trade period could be later this year, but I think given what we spoke about before with the CBA, being renegotiated, a whole bunch of new finances, a whole bunch of new uh, factors to, to to put into that in terms of how many list spots are going to be available. I think we could be seeing a lot more players on the move and looking for, for new clubs when the trade period does eventually arrive. 
certainly a complex issue, mm. but we're trying to make it simple for you, <laughs> thanks to AHM. Who are the key free agents, though, that could be on the move? Because we love the trade talk at afl.com.au, yeah. and I know there are quite a few restricted free agents. Yeah, the big name of restricted free agents, Brad Crouch at Adelaide, who was the subject of a lot of interest last mm. year. Joe Danaher at Essendon, of course, he had that failed try at moving to Sydney last year. We expect him to try yep. and get his way back to the Swans at the end of this season. You've got a whole heap at the Giants. So Jeremy Cameron's the big one, the reigning Coleman medal winner. But you've also got Zach Williams and Aiden Kaur, who have turned into <sighs> really important players for them. Former Melbourne skipper Jack Viney's on as well. There's also a lot of players that are uncontracted that aren't on that free agent mm. list. They're not free agents just yet, but they haven't got their futures resolved. We've spoken heaps about Jordan Degoe and Darcy Moore. Yep. They're two at Collingwood. Ben Brown at North Melbourne. I'm expecting those three to get pretty significant rival interest as well. So their futures will certainly be debated whilst this plays out throughout the year. Might be hard for the GWS Giants to actually hold on to those Might three be. big name yeah. restricted players. Alrighty, so there you have it. Footy made simple thanks to AHM Health Insurance. Make sure you keep clicking back to afl.com.au and the AFL Live official app for all of your footy news as we count down to the restart of season 2020.